Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and I like Shenmue. I played one, two, watch Shenmue, and even back the filler episode on Kickstarter. But let's face facts here. This is crap, and everything that was ever good about Shenmue has been easily bettered by Sega's Yakuza series. Shenmue was great when it came out. I loved exploring the recreation of 1980s Japan. I liked the freedom to go where I liked and spunk my money up the wall on capsule toys. The story about duality of life and the cycle it goes in, unfolding while you go on a revenge quest, was great in the first two games, even if the third game pissed all that away. Plus the chunky but satisfying fighting mechanics of the first couple of games were enjoyable too. Again, even though the third game shit the bed on that front as well. But anything good in these three games is far better in these three games. Ryoga got a Kosh studio that makes Yakuza as many ex-AM2 staff members. Plus both games have very similar aspects like both being very Japanese, both are open and free game worlds, and both has very satisfying combat and a gripping story. So don't do what this well-known Shenmue nut job did and start crying because I'm comparing the two games. Japan of the 1980s was a fucking wonderland. The economic bubble meant everyone had money and there was plenty of work to go around. This created the perfect conditions for the golden age of Japanese anime to happen, with many groundbreaking shows hitting screens this decade. On top of that, the modern era of gaming was born thanks to Nintendo's Famicom. It's a time that's fondly looked back upon, so one of the great features of Shenmue was the ability to visit a rendition of this time without needing a time machine or socially acceptable levels of clothing. Exploring the game world that first time was a lot of fun. Just seeing how the different areas are constructed and decorated definitely does give off a mid-1980s vibe, as does checking out the shops and zooming into all the detail of what is around. When I first played this over 20 years ago, just the experience of looking at a world now lost in time was incredible. But it's not the year 2000 anymore, and it's only my nostalgia that keeps this looking good. Because without the nostalgia, the reality is that this looks shit now. Blurry low res textures with crappy amounts of geometric detail just don't cut it anymore. If you bought a game now with these graphics, you'd demand a refund straight away. This is where Yakuza 0 comes in. You can visit this same Japanese period in time, but now with far, far better graphics. The areas are larger, but at the same time, they are more even densely packed with detail and objects. I can do what I did in Shenmue 20 years ago, but now everything doesn't look like shit. I can now zoom right into the fuck ton of background detail that is loaded into this game and because these games are huge compared to Shenmue, you can do this for weeks. The one thing Shenmue has over Yakuza in this area is that Shenmue does have small neighbourhood settings to walk around, which isn't really offered in Yakuza, apart from that one section where you see Kiri's apartment before it gets blown up. Just walking around and staring at things like a cock isn't what these games are about though. You want stuff to do. Yeah, you could do the main storyline, but why do that when you can spunk your money on mini games? Sega pioneered this concept of piss fighting around in the first game of the series. Buying capsule toys of your favourite Sega characters was great, even if half the time you'd end up getting fucking dice or some shit. You could spend time in the arcade playing Hang On, Space Harrier, QTE title, all of which are actual Sega arcade games, although QTE title was called Big Title when it was actually in real 
real life arcades. You've also got two different types of darts games and a reaction game called Excite QTE. There's also a fruit machine area called the Slot House where you can win tokens which do almost nothing as they can't be exchanged for anything at all. And if you want even the chance of getting a certificate for amassing 10,000 tokens, you'll need to visit the fortune teller first to see which machine is gonna pay out. Shenmue 2 added a few extra mini activities you could do to earn money like arm wrestling, box carrying, dice gambling, and the most famous of them all, Lucky Hit, which features more balls dropping than a teenage male choir. It was a pretty good selection, then Shenmue 3 comes in to ruin the day. Gone are the games like Space Harry and Hang On, and in comes Wish.com arcade games like Highway Star, Chibi Fighter, and Whack-A-Mole. You still had some gambling and QTE title, but it felt like a huge letdown from the previous games. Then Yakuza 0 bursts onto the scene to show how it's supposed to be done. Outrun, Space Harrier, Super Hang On, Fantasy Zone, that's just the classic Sega games. You've also got UFO Catchers, an underground all-female fighting arena, bowling, baseball practice, fishing, darts, pole, a whole side story devoted to pocket car racing, a side story for the disco minigame, and another for the telephone club. That's a lot, right? Well, there's still karaoke, poker, roulette, mahjong, shogi, blackjack, a whole load of Hanafuda card games which you've got no idea about. Then there's the two big money generating sub games which also have huge storylines surrounding them. Majima has the hostess club to manage and organize, and Kiru has the real estate mini game complete with subplot. Yakuza Zero by itself makes Shenmue look like an embarrassment. Not only are there more games to play, but they are higher quality, and most of them aren't just a mere side attraction, but also have quests and subplots attached to them. Also, I love the fact that they called the arcade buildings Sega High Tech Land, which is the same branding Sega used on their arcades during the 1980s. The Yakuza Kiwami games kept up this level of side activities, but Kiwami took Sega's Mushi King trading card bug battling arcade game and injected the female fighters into it, and in the process, created Mesu King, which can be found in the now time period correct Club Sega arcade holes. Kiwami 2 went balls out crazy and added both Virtua Fighter and Virtua Long. Then on top of this, they even added Sega Toilettes, which are real life urinal games Sega used to create and install in men's toilets in Club Sega buildings. But no matter how many UFO catchers and Virtua Fighters get added, the greatest side activity is called at Majima and doing a round of karaoke. うん。おれが世界中を。はい。好き勝手に乗り換えられたとして。はい。君が不幸になるなら。やめよう。イケイケゴーゴー。田舎の神くさい表情反転イエーイ私に芸に固い枕で眠ることになったと信じてもかばん君が幸せならば運のさはいはいはいはいどれだけ無目で残酷な不不不地獄に突き落とされても君が悲しむよりは千倍ランパイマシアディ幸せなら意味のさ構わねえさ苦しみよ憎しみよどんと So far, I've talked about optional stuff you could do. You could act like a fucking tourist and stare at shit for hours. You could sink all your money into collectible toys and classic Sega games, but these are side distractions from the main gameplay loops in Shenmue and Yakuza. I'm going to save the storyline and characters in these games for the final section of this video, because it's important to first talk about the actual main gameplay structures of these games. If you skip the storylines like a mongrel, didn't play the mini games, what would you actually be doing in these titles? 
Let's start with Shenmue. The bulk of this gameplay is acting like some sort of detective by talking to people and using the information they tell you to work out where it is you need to go next. There are no waypoint markers, no mini-map guides, it's just you and your in-game notebook where you write down important information to get you to the next goal. Take the Shenmue demo called Watch Shenmue as an example. You start off with the task of finding the guy called Mr. Yukawa before 7pm. So I I ask the guy at the fish shop and he doesn't know who Yukawa is but suggests asking the old lady at the florist down the road. So I go to the florist but the old lady is out so I ask the hot girl who works there instead. She says she saw him at the park behind the game arcade. So I go to the park and the old guy there says he spoke to Mr. Yukawa and now he saw him head off into the game arcade. So I go to the game arcade and the guy that works there tells me that he saw him and he got his business card. He gives me the card, I inspect it. There's a shop name and a time written on the back Asia Travel Co 4pm I walk out of the arcade and I go and ask the baker where Asia Travel Co is he doesn't know so I walk down the street and ask someone else he tells me that Asia Travel Co is much further down the street just after the vegetable stand. This is the main gameplay loop in Shenmue. It's a detective game. Now, you can speak to anyone in the game, but most people will think you're some sort of weirdo and try to get away from you. Excuse me? Oh, not now. I'm too tired right now. Um... Excuse me, but I don't feel comfortable talking with strange men. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. I have to go now. I'm not in the mood to talk now. Hey, mister! You wanna wrestle? You can knock on people's doors, but none is ever there, and the ones that are there never actually want to speak to you. This gameplay loop is broken up every so often with quick time events and a fight every now and then. And we'll talk about the battle soon, but the detective style gameplay loop is the main difference between Shenmue and Yakuza. With Yakuza, again, if you skipped all the story and like a pleb didn't try any of the mini games, your gameplay loop would be go to the waypoint marker on the map and do the mission. Once you have completed the mission, a new waypoint marker will appear on the map, and now you need to go and do that. But when you get a mission, it could really involve anything. There is one where you deliver a pizza, one where you give advice to a group of nice guys who just want to form a band with a tough image, one where you give help to a dominatrix to be better at her job, one where you try to help piece together a password for a weapons merchant just because it seems like an interesting thing to do, and I shit you not, one where you have to protect Michael Jackson from zombies as he moonwalks down the street. A lot of missions do involve you kicking the utter shit out of people, but the combat is so fluid and it's so fun to play it never gets old, no matter how many mission fights or random encounters happen. Shenmue also has a fair few fight sections, but nowhere near the same amount, and although the fighting mechanics in 1 and 2 felt decent in the year 2000, these days they feel a little stiff as they were based on the fighting engine found in Virtua Fighter 2, which AM2 also created. Created. Shenmue 3, however, is a complete shit show. There is no skill required. It's just mash buttons until you win. And if you didn't win, just go and do some more training so your punches hit harder. Go back, mash buttons again, win. Incredibly, the crappy chibi fighter arcade game has better fighting mechanics than the actual battle system used in the main game. Shenmue does allow you to train your moves for increased damage, whereas Yakuza has different fighting styles, which all have different skill trees so you can improve different aspects about each style. Yakuza has a health system which requires you to eat food to regain hit points you lost from fighting. I believe the first two Shenmue games were planned to have this feature too, but it was cut at some point, as there are many food items in the games that you can buy, but they do almost nothing, and your health meter doesn't require refilling after a fight. Shenmue 3 did introduce a health system which requires you to eat food to replenish HP lost from sprinting around and taking taking damage in fights, and I firmly believe AM2 plan to have a system like this from the start.
As with most modern games, these days it's the story that is a huge draw and one of the reasons the first two Shenmue games are remembered so fondly. So here's a spoiler free rundown. First of all, the main character, Ryo Hazuki, is a very likeable person and as a player you enjoy stepping into his shoes as you progress through Japan, into Hong Kong, Kowloon and then Guilin. The people that you meet on the journey are interesting and you actually want to learn more about them and their lives. But the most important part is how the story unfolds as you play. With each mission and each cutscene you feel that you learn a little bit more about what's going on and this is matched with a feeling of progression. You always feel that you're going down a path and that your next goal is in sight. This is all done through storytelling and narrative and it's executed brilliantly. That is until you hit the third game and the entire thing goes to shit. The first two games feel like they are really revving up and getting ready to really hit you with some huge plot details and they do this while they're actually almost visibly setting up all the plot strings in front of you. You then enter the third game ready for these plot lines to unfold around you and then nothing happens. You finish the game with almost no new information than what you started with. You achieve nothing. You learn nothing and the entire game feels like a complete waste of time. In the opening to this video I said this and even back the filler episode on Kickstarter. That is what Shenmue 3 feels like. It feels like an anime filler episode made to pad out a series in between story arcs. It sends you out on a boring detective quest to find out answers to questions you simply don't give a shit about to begin with. Yakuza on the other hand is a fucking masterclass in storytelling. Playing his Kiru feels like you're taking control of an extremely likeable hero. He kicks all the arse. He is someone who gets really well fleshed out in the game story and quickly becomes someone you root for and someone who you want to see succeed in his quest. All of the characters in these games are so well written. Their personalities are so clear to see and so distinct. It makes you feel like the world of Yakuza is a real lived in world. The stories are so brilliantly constructed and so fantastic written that you go out seeking side quests just to see what other fun and quirky characters you can talk to and meet in these towns. Then on top of this you have the series' other main character, Goro Majima, a lovable lunatic madman who is completely unpredictable and thoroughly entertains you with his presence on screen. Also, the introduction to Goro in Yakuza 0 is by far and away the greatest character introduction ever in the history of gaming. No other game has ever had a cutscene that turned a character from a total unknown face to some someone you feel completely invested in in such a short amount of time. It's the best example of Yakuza's masterful storytelling ability. And there we have it. This was the story of how Yakuza demolished all of Shenmue's selling points. Everything that was ever appealing about Shenmue has been outdone easily by Yakuza. 